In 2023, we were very fortunate to have been provided some incredible cars to feature on our channel. Looking back over the year, we thought it'd be a great idea to put together a list of our favorite cars reviewed. So here it is, the Rich Reviews Top 5 Cars Reviewed for 2023. Before we put together our list of top five cars reviewed for 2023, we had to put together some qualifying criteria so that we could at least apply some logic to the selection process. The criteria we set are as follows. How the car drives, how the car looks, how the car makes you feel, how special the car is. So for example, is it a classic or is it a low numbers car or how renowned is the car in the world? And also, would you believe it, value for money. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy putting that criterion in that selection process, but it does make a difference. Now, before I start on our top five, I just wanna say thank you very much to all the people that provided the cars for review for 2023, and also all the dealerships, etc., that we worked with. Thank you very much, it was very, very much appreciated. If you'd like your car featured on the Rich Reviews channel, please let us know by dropping us a comment below. So coming in at number five is the Porsche 911 991.1 GT3. GT3 really goes under the radar and yes you could say that the wing slightly gives away that you're driving something special um, unless of course you're driving a GT3 Touring. This is one of the first cars that we reviewed in 2023 and with respect to the rest of the cars in our top five it's probably got the lowest performance of all the cars. 475 brake horsepower, 324 pound foot of torque, not to 60 in 3.4 seconds, so it's one of the slowest, would you believe it? Not that that is slow. It's a comparable performance really to the 458, but it's a lighter car, it's more agile. It really, really wraps around you when you're driving it. But the thing about the Porsche GT3 and the 991.1 is it's engineering, it's preciseness, that Germanic engineering that goes into its functional approach to get you down the road. It's just so precise. And the seven speed dual clutch gearbox, yes, it lacks the emotion that you get with Ferraris and Lamborghinis. It doesn't slam you back in your seat, um, but it's so precise in how those gears are engaged. And they're so fast, bang, 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 it bangs those gears in and just gets you down the road. And the bizarre thing is the 991.1 GT3 is exceptional value for money. And I should qualify that, that this is when com you compare it against the other cars in our top five list which is incredible because you get an incredibly well engineered functional scalpel of a, of a Germanic car for that price. And if you use the analogy of a Ferrari being a bit of a show pony and Lamborghinis being a bit of a shouty look at me car, then you could qualify the 991.1 GT3 as being a functional scalpel that cuts through to deliver incredible engineering, road holding and performance. And number four, we have the Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. This car is all about the engine and looks. That naturally aspirated 6.3 litre V12 pushing out 730 brake horsepower, 509 pound foot of torque, and will accelerate you up to 211 plus miles an hour. The car looks absolutely stunning in the Abu Dhabi blue with the crema interior. That specification was just fantastic. 
not a specification that I would choose because the crema interior takes the dye out of your jeans. So I'm always wearing jeans. So me personally, I wouldn't choose a crema interior Ferrari, but with regards to looks, it just looked fantastic with that specification. And it's a very practical car. With regards to the storage capability, you lift up the hatchback at the back, you've got that fantastic luggage section behind the rear seats, that lovely flat contoured section with those beautifully stitched leather straps strap over your luggage with. I don't think anybody would use that. They'd probably just sit their luggage on top. They wouldn't wanna undamage the straps possibly. Um, but you've got a hell of a lot of space in there as you'd expect from a GT. And everybody says that the steering is twitchy, it's too fast and the car's looking to kill you all the time. I didn't find that was the case at all. I found the steering nowhere near as twitchy as say a supercar as, the, as a 458 for example. It had a good section of, of giving it, a good amount of giving it, is, which again is what you'd expect from a GT. And the performance, yes, if you put your toe into it really hard with cold tires, of course it will snap round and bloody take you out. It's a 730 brake horsepower car, you know, all that 509 pound foot of torque. Of course that's gonna, gonna slam you around and it's gonna cause a problem if you put your toe into it too hard. You've gotta respect these sort of cars. You can't just slam your foot on the accelerator and expect all the electronics to sort it out for you. But taking into account the performance of the car and its torque and its, its top end speed, it wasn't as crazy as people say it is. I found it very progressive. And yes, I only used about half throttle max because you just don't need all that performance. I didn't need to use, use that performance for driving the car. It's fast enough without putting my foot right into the carpet. Um, but it, I found it to be quite progressive and it was just a stunning car to look at and a stunning car to drive. And the key feature of that car, that V12, oh my effing God, that V12. It really took me back to the days of those old V10 F1 cars, screaming down the road. It was just a fantastic sound, fantastic look, fantastic sound. There was no way we couldn't include that in our top five. Stunningly looking car and with that awesome V12 sound. So in at number four is the incredible Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. And number three, we place the Lamborghini Huracan Technica. to include a Lamborghini in our top five. We only reviewed the two Lamborghinis, the Performante and this Technica, and I just had to include the Technica because it's such an exceptional car. I didn't expect to like it, especially after driving the Performante. I thought the Technica was gonna be very similar in, in its characteristics, but they've resolved all the problems that the Performante had. Yes, the Performante was a very track-focused car and the, and the Technica is more of a road-focused car, and that really showed through in the way it was, it was engineered, but also the quirks like the, the cream the car creeping forwards or creeping back when you've got it in in one of the forward gears or in reverse gear first or, or reverse gear um, which is part of the way the early Lamborghinis worked um, they they crept forward like the old torque converter automatics the later cars and certainly the Technica don't function in that way anymore they function more like the automatic approach in the Ferraris and, and the McLarens you don't have that creep process. And also you've got that whacking great big central console screen, which I absolutely abhor on cars, but all modern cars have those things nowadays. It's just how it is. Um, it's, uh, it really dates cars in my opinion and really dates them going forwards. Um, you can imagine, can't you, in five, seven, 10 years time, the Technica and these cars with, with these electronic screens like the, like the Ferrari Roma, they're gonna look really dated with all this electronics in there. Um, it says a lot for companies like Bugatti who stay away from all this electronics in their cars. Those cars are gonna stay with that classic look all the way down through their heritage. Um, this isn't gonna be the same for these cars, for these, for these modern style cars, but hey, that's how it is. That's how the world's gone and, and it's, the, it's the way how things go. But I didn't expect to like that car and I absolutely loved it. That 5.2 litre V10, 631 brake horsepower, 417 pound foot of torque, knocked to 62 in 3.2 seconds. The thing just screamed you down the road. Absolutely love the car. And it had pliable enough suspension. Yes, it was firm, but it was pliable enough. The look of that car, you know, with a Rancho Borealis paintwork, it was just fantastic. And the interior was a bit more low key than the Performante and it really suited it. It didn't need all that shoutiness that the Performante's got. The Technica really surprised me as well because it felt almost as agile as the Pista. The Pista was a lot more nimble and more capable than the Technica, but it had that feel about it. 
And even though the Technica is still fairly wide, it did wrap around you. And the performance and the agility of the car was just there. And again, like I said, because I didn't get that feeling from the Performante, all those concerns were gone as soon as I got in and started driving the Technica. And of course, the way it sounds as well, that V10, that 5.2 liter V10, it's just bloody exceptional. And you open up the engine lid and you look at that, that offset V10, it's just fantastic looking car as well. There was no bad side to it. I just loved everything about that car. And it's also got rear wheel steering as well to boot. So when you're driving the car slowly, it shortens the wheelbase. So of course it turns on a coin when you turn it around and it, the, the wheels turn the other direction when you're over a certain speed. So of course it lengthens the wheelbase. So it meant that that car was more stable going at greater speeds. And you could really feel that as well when you were driving it, at, when you were really pushing on with the car. And also, you know, when you when you look at the styling of the car, as I said, the Arancho Borealis external paintwork, um, you had the interior styling, which looked really classy in my opinion. And then when you look at the front, in my opinion, the, the older style Hurricanes or the earlier Hurricanes are really showing their age with regards to their styling, especially when you look at the Technica. I think it was a really good idea for them to bring that, that Cyan styling into the front of the Technica. It really sets it apart from the other Hurricanes and it really drags it forward into the modern age. It really makes it look like a spaceship styled Lamborghini, which is how Lamborghini is supposed to look. And of course, there's gonna be no more naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V10 Hurricanes in the future. They're gonna be going hybrid. So that's it. That Technica is the last one of its class. No more naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V10 screaming down the road in the Lamborghinis. So in at number three, we had the last of the naturally aspirated non-hybrid mid-engine supercars that you could buy the Lamborghini Huracan Technica. If you enjoyed the video so far and if you enjoy our format of content, please give the video a like, very important for the channel. And if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing. Now back to the video. Now the top two cars placed at number one and number two positions, they've swapped places a few times. In effect, you could say that they shared the top position, but we are gonna rate one above the other. So in at number two is the incredible, exceptionally special Alfa Romeo 8C Competizione. Now this is a very special car, only 500 of these cars were ever made, so very, very low numbers. And only I think around 35 of these were brought into the UK and it's pretty much a coach built car. So you can't compare it to the 4C. And the, and, the, and the meters, say, for example, of the, of the Alfa Romeos that were built on the normal production lines. This is a very, very special car. And it's got very unique features for its day. For example, the interior has matte carbon fiber. So that just didn't exist in any other cars in those days. So it's very, very bespoke in the way how it was styled. And the interior looks like it's coach built. It just feels solid as a rock and it's just beautifully styled. Um, when you look on the outside, the curves, it just the car looks absolutely awesome. Nothing looks like an Alfa Romeo 8C. Very, very, very special car. And yes, though, the performance isn't mind blowing when you consider it nowadays. It still is, what, a 4.7 litre, 450 brake horsepower, 346 pound foot of torque. And on paper, they said it would accelerate you 0 to 62, 4.2 seconds. And the sound of that car, that sound of that 4.7 litre V8, just incredible. It felt like it was going to try and kill you with that sound. The crowd. And yes, it had one of the old single plate clutch. Um, so you had that latency and you have to lift, you have to lift a bit to get the best performance out of those gear changes so that you didn't keep it on accelerator when you were changing gear. But you got used to that. I got used to that very quickly when I was driving it. So fortunate to be able to review that on our channel. Such a special car in how it drove and, and how it looked. And it's, it's old style engineering. It's coach built engineering. So it had to feature very highly in our top five. And like I say, it was almost tied for the top position in our top five. But you know, we did think that the, that the car we've given the top position to did deserve it. Just It just slightly edged the 8C and you'll understand why when we tell you. So what's in at number one? Have you guessed it? It's the Ferrari 488 Pista. <laughs>
this was just an exceptional car. I knew I was gonna love the Pista. Now there's, there's, there's two cars that I put in this sort of genre. There's the Speciali and the 408 Pista. And I always put the Speciali above the Pista and I still do now. I still will take a Speciali over a Pista. But in driving that Pista, it really put it a lot closer together for me than, than I ever thought. And I, oh, yeah, if I had the opportunity to get a Pista at an exceptional price, I wouldn't turn it down. It's just such a formidable car, incredible piece of engineering. It's really two cars in one. It's, it's pretty much a Grand Tourer. Yes, it doesn't have the Grand Touring luggage capability. And it, of course, it is really a track going version of the 488. Um, but it's very sensible. You, you can drive the car really slow. It's not twitchy at all. Yeah, if you punch it, it'll, it'll, it'll bite you, but it's just a very, very capable car. You can use it as a Grand Tour and you can use it on things like Euro Tours for driving passes and, and aggressive switchbacks. You know, this particular piece that we reviewed was also featured on our European tour. So if you want to see the proof of, of its capability as a GT tour and as an adrenalized sporty switchback driving supercar, then take a look at our European tour series of videos. The car was featured on in those videos and it just drove impeccably well. It was exceptional. And you've got incredible performance to back it from that 3.9 litre, 710 brake horsepower, 568 pound foot of torque, accelerating you from 0 to 62 in 2.85 seconds. 2.85 seconds, that's bloody incredible. <laughs> felt all of that performance as well when we were driving it. The agile capability of that car was just exceptional. The way it could change direction and it's road holding, just exceptional. It didn't feel like anything was gonna usurp it. Really loved every second of driving that Pista. And it wasn't adorned with flipping electronic screens, etc. It didn't have things like an electronic iPad for a center console. So you had all proper switch gear there to change all the, all the setup of the car. And in my mind, engineered out some of the quirkiness of, of the styling of the 408 and advanced those. Um, it looks a lot better with the way how the S duct is designed into the front of the 408 Pista. And again, it harks back to the Speciali with the Speciali's edition of that front nose. And that car was exceptionally good looking as well with its external bodywork colored in Grigio alloy and its interior in that stunning charcoal Alcantara. Just a beautiful specification and a beautiful car and incredibly performant. There was no downsides apart from the sound. <laughs> Obviously with the turbos on there, it just really muted the sound on that Pista. And we are gonna revisit that car because the owner has had a tuned performance exhaust put on that car now, and it sounds a lot better. So we are gonna revisit it, and we're gonna create another little bit of an, an advanced updated video for you. And we're gonna be bringing you the new advanced, new improved version of that 408 Pista with the better soundtrack. It just does not have the sound of say a Speciali or the F12 or any other not naturally aspirated car because of those twin turbos but exceptionally performant and very linear is in its delivery of that torque as well. That 568 pound foot of torque, it doesn't all come at once. It would be great if it was a limited numbers car, but it isn't. I would personally would still prefer a Speciali over a Pista, but it's so close, it's so minute the difference now. Really, really love that Pista and that's why it exists at our number one slot. If you haven't already watched all the videos that we featured in our top five, we've put them in the description below so it's in a nice, easy, accessible format for you. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video.